Hey guys, Ryan with Tonic Site Shop here, and I'm very excited about talking to you all about blog posts in this video and how your blog posts can really level up your SEO. I've been using blog posts to get on page one for many sites for years, and it works out really well. We've already talked about adding keywords to your homepage, but this is just one page. Now imagine if you had 10 or 20 different pages for keywords that you really want to rank for. This is the importance of using your blog to really generate traffic to your website. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about why blogs matter, uh, how to format your blog posts, and just showing you examples of blogs that I've been personally involved in helping getting on page one. So first, why do blogs matter? Well, you only have one homepage. And yes, you do wanna get your homepage ranked for your umbrella keyword, which is your main keyword for your business. But you could be using your blog to get a ton of traffic from keywords that are related to your business. For example, we're gonna take a look at this blog post that Tonic Site Shop has, and it is how to add your Instagram feed to show it. Now we understand our audience all use show it. And if they don't, they usually switch to using show it. So a ton of our audience are searching for show it related topics. So instead of only trying to rank for show it website templates, why don't we try to rank for how to add an Instagram feed to your show it website? We know how to do that. So we simply wrote a blog post about it, giving all the details. And now we're on page one for a keyword that gets searched hundreds of times. Now we can do this again and again and again for tons of different topics related to show it and show it website templates. And this is the key to getting a ton of traffic. So that is why it's super important to really try to use your blog to rank for a ton of different keywords and get way more organic traffic than just what your homepage can bring in. Now let's jump right into this. Let's see what a blog post needs to look like to actually land on page one. So this is a blog post SEO checklist. If you want to download this, go ahead and find it in the email, but let's take a deeper dive into this SEO checklist here. Now, step one, we need to research our topic. I've already gone over a little bit of keyword research, but just to recap, you could use a tool like Uber Suggest to do some light keyword research. Use your industry knowledge and type in whatever you think people are going to be searching in Google. Type that into Uber Suggest and look at data like search volume and SEO difficulty. Once you decide on a main keyword or key phrase, then you're going to want to make sure to use that keyword inside of your blog post a handful of times. And we'll go over more specifics here in a second. We also wanna do some page one research. So for example, if I was trying to rank for ad Instagram to show it, I would go to Google and I'd type in ad Instagram to show it. I maybe would type in Instagram on show it or how to add Instagram feed to show it. I would do a bunch of keyword research within Google and I would open up all of the results from page one and see what those pages look like and what they're talking about, how many words they're using and how many times they say the word Instagram and show it within their blog post. This again is gonna be really helpful to you when you're writing your blog post to know what page one results are already looking like. And then you can basically just make a blog post that's even better than what you see currently on page one. Now, step two is these blog post must haves. Writing 1,000 plus words is really important when possible. Now, the longer the tail of the keyword, meaning the longer the search term is, the less amount of words are needed. But in general, uh, studies show that blog posts that are on page one usually have 800 to 2,000 words. So it's good to just have over 1,000 words on your blog post. You also wanna check your keyword density. So basically what this means is if you're trying to rank for uh, add Instagram to show it or Instagram on show it one to 3% of all the copy should be those keywords. So for example, if you have a thousand words uh, in your blog post, you should have anywhere from 10 to 30 keywords or key phrases written throughout your blog post. Now this isn't a lot. It's very easy to achieve this, 
but you do need to remember to stay consistent when writing those keywords down within your blog post. Another thing is to add keyword friendly headings. Now this plays a role right into this keyword density because when you add keywords to your headings, your H2s, H3s, and H4s within your blog post, that is adding keyword density to your blog post as well. We're gonna go over all this more in detail when we look at this blog post here, but let's keep making our way down through this checklist. So continuing step two, I want you guys to add links to your blog post. This is really important for a few different reasons. One, Google loves code. And so when you add links, you're adding more code to the site and it's becoming a more dynamic blog post and Google really does love that. Another thing is that the internet is just a series of links to other pages. WWW stands for World Wide Web, and it's basically a web of links. And so it's very important to have links, relatable links within your blog post, either to other related content on your website or related content outside of your website. Now be careful not to link directly to another post that's just like yours. That wouldn't be good for you and your blog post. But let's say you're talking about a specific book in your blog, you can definitely link to that book's homepage or an Amazon link to that book. And that's really gonna help Google further understand what your blog post is about. Another thing to remember is to add images to your blog posts when possible as well. Now this isn't going to make or break your blog post from ranking on page one, but I will say it definitely helps. Again, people that are reading your blog posts are humans and humans are definitely drawn to images. That's why apps like Instagram and Facebook are so popular and full of images. People wanna visually see what you're talking about as well. So it's really important to add images to your blog posts when possible. Now let's move on to step three here. You're going to want to add your blog post meta. We've already talked about this a little bit in previous emails. It's going to be the same for a blog post. You're definitely going to want your slug to contain keywords. And again, for example, we're going to go over this blog post here and I'll walk you through step-by-step step how I did that for this blog post. You're going to want to add a custom SEO title and meta description as well using a plugin like Yoast. And that's going to allow you to add those custom titles and descriptions within your blog posts. Moving on to step four, blog post formatting. This is really, really important. The main thing to remember is to make your blog post easily scannable. So what does that mean? That means if someone lands on your blog post, they do not have to read the entire blog post to get an idea of what you're talking about. And they do not have to read through your blog post to find one section within your blog post. This means not using just paragraphs. I want you to split all your paragraphs up with headings, H2s, and those are going to help the reader be able to scroll through and see different sections of your blog post. Again, we're gonna look at an example of that as well. Further down inside of the checklist, I have some blog post formatting examples, and this is what I was talking about with the formatting and making it really easily scannable. So you can see here's an example of a blog post that maybe a travel expert would be writing. So the post title will be traveling to Barcelona, five unique places to visit while on vacation. So we would have an opening paragraph and then we'd have an H2, take the train to Blanes, and then you would write a little bit about that process. So instead of just going from this intro paragraph into, now the first thing I wanna say is take the train to Blanes, make it an H2. This is going to help Google understand that this little section right here is about taking a train to Blanes. So even if someone types in, can I take a train to Blanes in Barcelona? This section right here has the chance of ranking for that. So. By adding H2s, you're actually allowing Google to rank you for multiple keywords within one post, even though your post is about traveling to Barcelona. Let's look at another example here of a family photographer. Let's say you write a post about four best Sarasota locations for your family photos. Each of the locations you can see here are H2s, and then we have paragraphs below explaining why, let's say Siesta Key Beach is one of the best locations for family photos. And then there's a little bonus content in here and it's called the 10X content rule. I'm not gonna talk about this too much in this video, but I do want you guys to go through and look this up. It's a blog post by Moz and it goes over how to create content that is 10 times better than what you see on page one 
and the theory of if you do this, you will probably be ranking on page one for that keyword. So with that being said, let's take a look at a blog post that is actually ranking on page one in position one for a specific keyword. And we'll go over this checklist and cross check for all of the things within this post here. So if you type in add Instagram to show it, you're gonna see Tonic Site Shop ranks position one right at the very top for this keyword. Now let's see why. We did our keyword research when we were preparing to write this blog post. We wanted to see what was currently on page one and if we can make any results better. We decided on our main keyword and we also did our page one research. Now, looking back on this post, we definitely wrote more than a thousand words and our keyword density is definitely one to 3% and we have keyword friendly headings. So let's take a look at that. If I do command F and I type in Instagram, you'll see that we mentioned Instagram 31 times within this post, which is more than the 3%. What about show it? We mentioned show it 24 times. So you can see how this post is loaded with keywords, but it's also very organic. We're not just shoving the word show it and Instagram and how to add Instagram to show it all at the very top repetitively. We're using the words show it and Instagram very organically throughout the copy. We also are adding keyword friendly headings here. You could see here is an H2 and it's how to add your Instagram feed to show it with show it's social grid widget. Going down here, add the perfect location for your Instagram widget, connect your Instagram account to show it. These are all H3s. And as we go down, you can just continue to see keywords within the headings. Now going down on this checklist, we can see that we need to add links to the post and images to our blog post as well. So we have links to videos, we have images in here as well. And up at the very top, we have internal links going to other parts of the website. Now let's take a look at step three. We wanna optimize our slug, the URL. We wanna add a custom SEO title and we wanna add a custom meta description. Now you can see our slug here, add Instagram to show it. And that is pretty much an exact match keyword for what we're trying to get ranked for. You can see our SEO title here, how to add your Instagram feed to show it, and our meta description, the best way to add your Instagram feed to show it going on with more information about that. So you can see our SEO title, our meta description, and our slug are all optimized with the keywords that we wanna be ranking for. Now the blog post format, is our post easily scannable? Do we use big clear headings? Do we avoid walls of text? And do we add a post summary at the top? Well, that's yes to all. Here's our post summary. So it's gonna recap what this whole post is about. We have images separating text. So it's not just big walls of text everywhere. We're using our big clear headings. As people scroll down, they can scroll down and see exactly where they can connect their Instagram account to show it. So I hope that this video really helps you guys understand how to create and format blog posts that are SEO friendly. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Please feel free to reach out to me. Have a great day.